students are below 20 years of age according to the United Nations and in the comprehensive national survey on extent and pattern of drug abuse as we see in this paper out of the 1.8 million alcohol abusers 30 lakh of those were below 17 years of age they were adolescents basically similarly with cannabis out of the 3.1 million uh, cannabis abusers 20 lakh were again below 17 years of age a similar cross-sectional study was also conducted in Jalandhar in 2017 around the villages of Jalandhar and the prevalence of the substance abuse found out was 65.5% and the most commonly substance abuse was alcohol at 41.8% followed by tobacco at 21.3%. So, the, uh, so, my, uh, so my paper, the methodology for my paper, it was a cross-sectional study and it was conducted in Talwanti Sabo district Bathenda. The study participants included adolescents and young adults between the age group of 11 to 40 years. Convenient sampling was used and a total of 200 test subjects were studied in multiple private hospitals in Talwanti Sabo at random. A preformed semi-structure questionnaire was used to obtain the socio-demographic details of the individuals and to study the severity of the drug abuse prevalent, we used a DAST questionnaire, which is a drug abuse screening test. It consists of those eight questions. Each yes had a score of one and each no had a score of zero, except for question three. And the result of this questionnaire was basically the sum of all these questions. If the subject scored between six to eight, he was a severe drug abuser, four to six substantial, two to four zero or two to four low and then zero to two there was no drug use prevalent. The results of the study was that out of the 200 test subjects that we studied 180 were males 20 were females and the prevalence was found out to be 73.2% 146 out of the 200 test subjects they were drug abusers. The most commonly drug abused was alcohol at 52.2% followed by heroin at 28.7%. Another thing to note about the heroin drug abuse was that out of the 41 abusers, 19 of them, that is nearly half of them, were intravenous drug abusers. Other commonly drug abuse were tobacco at 13.1%, cocaine at 18.49%, tramadol at 15.9% and so on. Out of the 146 drug abusers, 127 of them also reported to have abused more than one drug at a time. The other table that we see on the other side of the slide, it correlates social demographic details of the subject with the abuse of drug. A common correlation that was seen with drug abuses was that it was more common in the male gender, those who were illiterate and those above 25 years of age. Out of the 146 drug abusers, 136 were males and 51 of those had were illiterate or only had primary level of education. 35.2% of the males scored between 6 to 8 on the DAST questionnaire which suggests severe drug abuse whereas only one female scored above 5. Another thing to note was that some subjects in this area reported using drugs as early as 14 years of age and the causes were again closely correlated with having an abuser in the family or peer pressure or curiosity or most importantly that the positive attitude that surrounds drug abuse in this area. Recently, 8% of the subjects also reported using drugs in the past 2-3 years because of the easy availability of those and the, ease and the unemployment that has been prevalent recently. Moving on to the treatment, 118 subjects responded by saying that they had talked to a family member or friend regarding their drug problem, whereas 83 of those were even specifically involved in a drug de-addiction program. To conclude this, as we just saw that 73.2% of the subjects were reported as drug abusers, we can say that nearly 3 out of 4 adolescents or young adults are currently hooked to drugs, which is an urgent issue that needs to be brought to the limelight. Also a grave danger that the, number, that the increasing number of intravenous drug abusers pose because this could mean an increase in the diseases such as hepatitis C or HIV. Not only is drug abuse harmful to the abuser himself or herself, but they also carry a financial and psychological burden on the family members, especially on the children, because this could mean less academic opportunities and uh, the feeling of being left out into the, with the children themselves. And this could push the children into the vicious cycle of drug abuse again. Thank you.
Excellent study. I must compliment a MBBS student presenting a very, very good data. But I think two questions I want to ask that whether it will be biased to have subject population from hospitals and whether you are looking for the harmful effect, dependence or abuse among uh, the drug addicts, uh, sorry, the drug users. So a convenient sampling was used which meant that it could be easier for me as a student to actually find the drug. Yeah, the but that will yeah. create a bias. Yeah. So next time you do, don't go to the hospitals, right? Stand in a market or a, a, you know, a public place, schools, public place, you know, gurdwaras, mandar, and you can go and check the population. That will not create a bias. And second is drug abusers, you must see for whether they were harmful effects, harmful use, or it is drug addiction, or it is drug use. So we must demarcate among these three, uh, you can say, the parameters. So, but anyway, for uh, I will give you an MD degree just now only. Thank you, sir. For this study, definitely. I, I have, uh, you know, scrutinized or judged so many studies. But you are comparable to an MD student. Thank you, sir. Great. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much.